Hi everyone, my name is Desiree Zelensky. I'm also the co-founder of the Independent Film Creative Hub. I also run the NEPA Film Society, a local filmmaking community here in Northeast Pennsylvania. And I'm also the organizer of the Mystery Box Film Challenge, which is happening right now. Uh, yes, every the Mystery Box Film Challenge actually kicked off on September 1st, so it's open, it's ready. If everyone wants to go to our Film Freeway page, the Mystery Box Film Challenge on Film Freeway, you'll get all the requirements, specifications, all the items and prompts that you have to use in your films this year, and we love to see what you come up with. And we'll be having the premiere in March of next year, of 2022. Hi, game. Hi. Uh, I'm, I'm good. It's so nice to finally meet both of you. Nice to meet you too. everything about me. Do you realize I haven't slept in a week? I'm, I'm so, so sorry. Doesn't it bother you? in all its many forms. If you are busy concentrating only on a racial diversity or an ethnic diversity, you're missing a whole wealth of opportunity and experiences. You want to say something? I know you didn't go to school. I overslept. Every day this week? <laughs> Explain this to me. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Stop! Sit back down. You're not going anywhere.
So, hey guys, looks like we're having some a little technical difficulties on Facebook with the audio, but hopefully you can hear all of us now. So we're back here with James Worthington and just a little background about James. James is a filmmaker and director who loves specializing in the horror genre, but he doesn't stop there. His most recent films include two, which has been nominated for Best LGBTQ Short and London Short Film Festival. Mm -hmm. James was also the cinematographer and editor of the film, and he's also the filmmaker for Vampirus, which has been nominated for Best Horror Short at the London Shorts Festival and Best Horror at Paris Film Festival. Uh, yes, uh, hopefully you can hear me now. Uh, sorry about that. There was a little bit of a glitch on Facebook. Uh, but just for those who don't know me, again, uh, Thank you for joining us. My name is Luz Cabrales, and I am the co-founder of the Independent Film Creative Hub, as well as Cranton Films. Again, like Desiree said, we're very, very excited about having James as our guest today. And we also said a little bit about the Mystery Box, which is running on Film Freeway right now, uh, which means that you have just a little bit under a month or, or two months. How, how long do they have to submit that film? It's a little more than two months for the challenge. I mean, we're getting to, since it's almost, my goodness, it's almost October. So you're almost at the halfway point yes, right now. And, <laughs> and we want to make sure, just to reiterate, um, that we are here to help you. We want to make sure that if you are doing this film, uh, in this challenge, uh, you can send us an email uh, or uh, message us on Facebook, not our personal pages, please, because sometimes I don't check uh, everything to, through the Independent Creative Hub. Uh, if you are planning on submitting that way, if you're not sure how to get started, we can get you the support that you need. But anyway, we are here for James. So we, you just saw his demo reel. Uh, uh, James, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Maybe just give us a little bit of an introduction of who you are as a filmmaker, who you are as an artist, and then we'll we'll go from there. All right. Uh, so yeah, I have uh, been in like the Northeast Pennsylvania area for all my life. Um, I'm sure you noticed from the demo reel, um, I work with Electric Cine. I'm like kind of the co-founder of that. Um, and that was named after the Electric City, Scranton, because, you know, uh, Lindsay Pelicacci and myself were both from there, you know, yeah, that's wordplay. Fine. That's, yeah. <laughs> we like to that play, was basically... <laughs> we like to play around with the Electric City as well in, uh, I mean, it's mm -hmm. such a beautiful area and such an awesome name. So why not, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, and and Lindsay was the one who came up with that uh, name. And then uh, just like riffing on that, we came up with the logo and an animation for it. Right. Um, and yeah, so uh, basically like since 2018, um, she and I have been working together on film projects. Um, we just kind of like luckily met through a mutual friend um, both discovered that we want to pursue actual careers in film. Um, and like, since then, it's just been amazing. Um, uh, both of our short films are like, uh, so special to us. Like they were both, uh, so two and the vampires are both stories that we've wanted to tell for years. Mm -hmm. Um, two is available now on YouTube and the vampires is coming out next month. Um, and we already have two or three more projects in the in the works. So wow. that's great. Yeah. No, and that's great because I mean, you talk about uh, collaboration in friendships and just having other people that have the same likes uh, be able to help you out with your film. You're helping them out with your film, uh, with their film. I think that's what it's all about. Um, tell mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about that. I mean, just being able to brainstorm and. Um, I know on two, which is the name of the film, the first film, uh, it actually, I, I see you were a cinematographer, you were an editor. Uh, tell us a little bit about the process of how to, um, I know you're collaborating, but she directed and then you did the visual parts, which is very important. Uh, so just a little bit about that and, and your experience on set. Yeah, so, um, so that was the first one that we really... Um, like worked together on through the entire process. Um, she had written a short film in college and then adapted it to like a screenplay format. Oh. Um, and it's it's funny because two was filmed in the middle of Vampirus. So like there was the first half of Vampirus and then all of two and then the second half of Vampirus. So we already knew how to like communicate with each other by the time we were 
working on that. Um, and she had like rough uh, storyboards and everything. And she was like, what do you think about this? Mm -hmm. um, and basically like from a practicality standpoint. And I was like, I think that's absolutely doable. Um, and even if you wanted to like combine this shot with this shot and we can have, you know, a little bit of camera movement. And, and one thing that I love about working with Lindsay is we always talk about the meaning behind every choice. Right. Um, so like the camera is stationary when that means something and it moves when that means something. Right. Um, and it's all in service of telling the story as, as well as we can and as efficiently as we can because short films need to like grab your attention and then just like get on with it and then like get out so that you're, you're left with that like quick impression, hopefully. No, no, no. And you're right because uh, I, I saw the movie too and I hope everyone can see it after this. We're going to put on all the links for, for everyone to see that film and just see the style of it. But because even though you didn't direct it and you're not accredited as director, as an editor and cinematographer, you're, you really are directing as well right because you are you are directing how it's going to look uh with your camera and and mm -hmm. then when you're in the editing part of it you're really shaping up the story cutting up the things that are not meant to be there or maybe will tell the story differently um maybe yeah. you can tell us about that because i did notice uh that you you held a lot of the shots in that film which mm -hmm. is very nice yeah um and, and, you know, that's that's very kind, the way that you put it. Um, but Lindsay is absolutely, like, involved at every step in the process. Um, so even though, like, I was physically operating the camera and, and physically, like, editing on my laptop, um, like, she's still involved in every decision-making process. So it's more about... Right. Um, what, one of my favorite parts is just brainstorming and saying, like, what do you think about this? Um, do you want me to like work a draft of this and send it to you to see if you like it more than what we have now. Um, so it's really just, I'm, I was more of a technician um, and like all of the creative decisions were, you oh, know. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Uh, so, so when you work together with, with her, um, were you communicating daily? Uh, how, how were you doing a lot of that? Uh, and were you doing, maybe she was with you in the room or editing or are you more of a, let me, put it together, see what you think, give me some notes, kind of thing. Yeah, um, we actually did all of that. Um, when, when both of us were free at the same time, it was several times a day we would be uh, in communication with okay. each other. Or if things popped up, there might be a week or two in between. Um, it was very flexible. Um, and of course, with the pandemic, um, eventually the editing process became virtual and long distance. Right. Um, but yeah, we, we really did everything. And especially with the second half, uh, the, the first half I kind of like drafted on my own and sent it to her. Um, and then the second half, we were actually in the room together, which was so amazing to actually just watch the, the raw footage with someone else because editing can be a very isolating process. So to have someone physically with you and like commenting out loud, um, is super artistically satisfying. Right, right. And um, I like to, uh, sometimes I hug conversations a little too much, but I'm going <laughs> to give, I know Desiree had a, a couple questions, but just to sort of finish out this, this just part of it. Listener. <laughs> <laughs> She's just a great listener. Uh, but uh, definitely, I mean, just for the editing part, just to sort of uh, close this out uh, on that part, is just um, how do you take, uh, for, for anyone out there that's doing editing, right? How do you take the, uh, um, I wouldn't say criticism, but critique, right? When, when you're like, you know what? I think this part works really good. And then you have someone else, uh, which will be the director saying, yeah, but I, I kind of want it this way. Um, how was your, your uh, collaboration when, when it came to that? Uh, so that, that's an excellent question. Um, like our, I think any artistic process, it's very easy to get personally invested in the work, um, which is absolutely a good thing. Like you have to care about what you're doing. Um, but at the same time, like any criticism about like, I think it could be different or better in this way. Um, 
none of that is like a personal comment. It's all about making the the end product as good as it can be. Um, so like criticism should be welcomed in in any capacity about like especially experimenting like editing is all about actually seeing you know how everything fits together the best way and it might not be what you planned from the beginning right um like a, a little bit of a tangent the one that we're working on right now um is very abstract and like i i don't even have the the words to describe it it's the last one in the demo reel called footprints footprints okay. um and like all of the raw footage was purposefully made very vague. So this now months long editing process is seeing like, what could this actually mean? And it's like the possibilities are endless. Like we are essentially making the short film from scratch in the edit. Oh, wow. That, yeah, that's, that's very, very interesting. Um, the, and especially that you mentioned that I know Desiree had the question about, so, so you move on from two, which will be a collaboration uh, with someone else who has a different vision or maybe the same vision that you have. And now you're, we're going into your other film that has been through film festivals as well. And it's more of a, something that you directed. So a little bit more personal, uh, would you say? But I know um, Desiree had a couple questions about that and then we can sort of move on to another one after that. Yeah, it was just, um, I had with um, with people who want to go see your film too, and when Vi Vampires comes up on your YouTube channel in a couple weeks, uh, what's the main takeaway that you would like people to get after they watch two and Vampires? Like the one thing from each film that they want to take away? Oh, wow. Um... I told you she had tough questions. You know, she's just waiting for the right moment. <laughs> I'm a very thoughtful person when it comes to questions. Yeah, no, that's that's an incredibly like deep insightful question and honestly um you you get so bogged down in the details of doing it that sometimes it is easy to lose sight of like the big picture um i i think with two it is more about understanding and and patience it uh like for anyone who's seen it you you know it's it is methodically paced like it is you kind of sit in every moment and hold on a lot of shots and there's a lot of silence um but it is about the the connection there and just being there for someone like the presence is more important than you know talking their ear off when uh when the one character shows up and just starts like spouting off that's really the only like fast paced conversation in the entire piece. Um, and everything else is just about like calmly being there for someone who, you know, who needs it. Like she's having an anxiety attack. She can't leave her apartment. Um, you just gotta, you gotta be there. Yeah. Um, no, yeah. Vampires, I honestly don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, was, that, was that more of a fun movie? Is that why? Is that why? uh kind of so the long story as short as i can possibly make it that is a story that started when i was in fifth grade oh. it it was just like an assignment like write a one-page short like scary story um and i was like oh i could probably expand on that and like writing is fun that was the first time i ever like wrote something for fun basically and then the one-page version turned into a 10-page version and then 40 pages, and then up to 134 pages. And I was like, oh, maybe I should make this into a novel. Mm -hmm. um, and then a couple years passed, I reread what I wrote and it really wasn't that good. So <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna condense this as much as possible. Um, so then meeting Lindsay and like really starting to get into filmmaking, I thought that was the perfect uh, short to start directing on, like get that idea out of the way so I can finally like move on to other projects. No, yeah, that's, that's definitely very, very important because uh, you're going to learn every project. You're going to learn something different, right? Yeah, but mm -hmm. sometimes you got to get that passion project out as well, you know, because yeah. you got to yeah. have fun. You got to have fun. 
Um, mm -hmm. I know, um, I don't know if we touched on this already, but like the biggest obstacle that you think you had, I know that we are in the time of COVID, which is unfortunate because we are missing out on a lot of things, but also you're an editor. So th has that helped you a little bit uh, just to sort of get into your projects a little bit more? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, just like I said earlier, where uh, editing can be isolating, um, it's also the perfect thing to do if mm -hmm. you only have like time to yourself. Um, so that uh, has been a very easy thing to work on during this time. Um, actually, the entire logo and animation was done because I had extra time, like at the beginning of the pandemic. <laughs> exactly. So, so that really was a benefit there. Um, and since then, I've uh, done like editing competitions. I'm, I'm in an edit festival oh. right now. Okay. Um, I, oh, this is so bad, I forget the name of it. That's um, right. But we're editing a music video um, called Don't by Calica. Okay. Um, and they just dumped like three hours of raw footage on their website and was like, here, just make whatever you can. That's um, very cool. You know, I yeah. did that. I did that back in 2015, in, uh, and and you don't realize when you do contests or you do uh, little uh, experiments like that that maybe you're not gonna win, maybe you know, but you gotta take it on as a learning, uh, you know, uh, situation there because mm -hmm. you're gonna learn a lot from contests. You're gonna learn a lot from going, you know, the extra mile, uh, especially as an editor. Um, you you'll be able to do um, more. Um, I know something like that it was imagine dragons they did uh their music video for adobe uh mm -hmm. and i learned multicam there just how to edit multicam and be able mm -hmm. to do that because it was so fast-paced and now i'm putting that into my current project so it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's very good that you mentioned that um just for any you know filmmaker that's starting right now and being able to do sometimes you don't see that you're learning from the little things that you do um, mm -hmm. so, so that's great that you mentioned that. Uh, so I know that's where I wanted to talk to you about the current project that you're doing that you said. <laughs> yeah. If you want to touch on, like, I, I know with, um, a couple of things, I know you mentioned about film festivals. I know a lot of people like the end game, so to speak is, uh, once you finish your film, you want to submit it to festivals to get on the film festival circuit. So what kind of like what your process is to choosing and picking which film festival do you want to submit your project to and also any kind of current projects you want to talk about that you actually are working on? Yeah. Um, so yeah, the uh, film festival like search process was uh, an interesting journey because we, we both knew we wanted to get them out there. And by the time we finished uh, two, which we finished first, um, like we had no idea where to start and thank goodness we, uh, found filmfreeway.com. It's super easy mm -hmm. to just search any location, any price range for the submissions, um, a, a certain date window if you're looking for, you know, for like the festival to be over by a certain date. Um, their search tools are, are super easy to use. Um, so that was the main thing that we, that we did. We basically said like, what is our budget? How many uh, festivals do we want to submit to? Um, and also just being like semi-realistic. Both of the short films that we've done so far are no budget, basically. It's, it's what we could personally afford. Um, so like they're probably not going to make it at like Cannes or Sundance or, or something. Um, but smaller film festivals need submissions too. So just see like you know, or, or even like the topic, especially Vampirus, we were looking for horror film festivals specifically. Right. Um, and two, there was a little more flexibility. Um, so yeah, that, uh, I, I don't know if that fully answers the question. No, I, no, it doesn't. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a, a whole lot. It's just going on film, right, film freeway. Like I've been on film freeway submitting my own projects and it's like, there's so many film festivals, like which ones do I want to submit to? And yeah, I look up the price of the submission why am I submitting this to like I'm submitting a script right now that I wrote to a film festival to have a screenwriting competition aspect mm -hmm. just to get it out there and stuff like that so it's kind of like 
all right, like just seeing like how, like a lot of film festivals are expensive. Not saying like you should definitely submit it to Sundance. Like <laughs> that is the limit, but it's like, yeah, you do have to look at your budget and they are kind of expensive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it, yeah and, and it's interesting that you uh, mentioned like screenwriting because um, that's a whole different ball game. And especially like any festivals that say in their rules, like whether you get in or not, will give you feedback like that's invaluable. So definitely like get it out there, get people's like cold read opinions. Like that's how you really improve is getting opinions of people who don't have the backstory and like seeing how your work actually plays, especially as an editor, if you're like in your head, like every time you watch it, you'll just see what you're trying to do instead of what you've actually done and how it's actually coming across. So you need other right. people's opinions. No, and, and that's very important that you say that. Uh, just, again, you have collaborated with filmmakers uh, on helping them shape their vision. Uh, maybe they don't know how to edit. Maybe they don't know how to use a camera, but they know what their story is. So just being able to do that. And again, with the film festivals, um, th- that's a great learning experience. Um, so I, I also wanted to ask, uh, before we get into the last uh, set of questions, just how do you find your resources uh let's say you're like i have zero budget right how do you and you have an idea that you want to do it so how what has been your experience with that just finding the resources other than the people that are trying to help you with the film yeah um so unfortunately i can't speak to uh like crowdfunding or Mm -hmm. or anything like that um because we really haven't gone that route um like we, we've kind of been embracing the limited resources so far and saying like, we'll only write things that we can feasibly do on our own. Right. Um, but uh, I would say the, the best thing you can do is, is plan ahead. Um, anybody that you bring on for a project like wants to have a plan and a vision. They don't wanna sit through you figuring out how you're going to do what you're trying to do. Um, and you can never over plan. So, you know, as many like storyboards, script revisions, um, mm-hmm. even filming dates and locations before you get actors or whatever, like, or, or crew people. I, I, yeah, I would say you can't over plan. You can't over plan, yeah. but be, be ready uh, to be able to change things, right? Uh, yeah, and, absolutely. Because <laughs> something's yeah, always um, gonna go wrong. You know, you just mm-hmm. never know what it's gonna be. Someone may not show up, uh, and you gotta mm-hmm. be ready to not give up. That's the that I think that's that's the thing. Just keep going. Just pivot. <laughs> yeah, finish mm-hmm. your project. Don't give up. And um, so I have two last questions. Okay, mm-hmm. for you. Uh, I'll leave the most important one to the end. But uh, just are are you planning on submitting to the mystery box? <laughs> I am. Oh, um, all right. Yeah, That's exciting. It's, I I know. I've watched every single video on that YouTube channel. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, the the last couple of years, it it just didn't like work out with my schedule. Okay. But this year, um, I you know I knew I was meeting you two, so it was the perfect time exactly. to uh, to finally submit something. That's um, perfect. We're very excited, yeah. and we hope uh, you know to see your film. Um, so with that, um, I know, you know, with the experience that you had in uh, your, the journey that you have taken, um, we're sort of coming at the end of the interview, but I always like to ask uh, filmmakers and artists uh, just a very, very, you know, typical question. What advice would you give to any younger filmmaker or in, anyone uh, that hasn't done a film or is planning on doing a film but maybe feels feels alone you know like they can't do it uh what would be your best advice for them i know it's Um, hard (laughs) it it is hard and and it's especially hard to think of like advice that hasn't been given a million times um but like just just talk to people i'm very shy um and introverted so film being a natural (laughs) yeah exactly Um, it's (laughs) um like film is collaborative, um, like maybe the most of any art form. Um, like you, you really need people, but 
like don't don't let whatever you have stop you you can right. still make something on your own even if it's not the dark knight or or <laughs> whatever um yeah just work with what you have work with um what have. also like i i always work with the the one rule of improv is you always say yes and so you can't like deny what circumstances you have or what someone has said or or what have you you can only work with what you have and move forward it's always yes and so Very you know good. yeah whatever we resources having... you have you can make that into a film see there you go so we all think alike you know and i like that i i really do like that advice because a, a lot of times i think uh you know filmmakers or artists you know like we want to do the best thing obviously but sometimes it's impossible with the resources we have but we can make something and we can make something that maybe is not as good as we think it is right now but maybe the next project will be better and then it gets better it gets better uh, yeah exactly and you're you're going to make mistakes so you know the more you make then the earlier those mistakes will will fall you know right like like in terms of your career Yeah, and I think, I mean, everything else, you know, like it's, it's a great, great uh, rule to follow. Uh, and, and you've said it great. Um, so I think um, Desire will close out our program, but uh, we want to thank you for, you know, for being yeah. here. It's, it's a little bit of a short conversation, but it will be available on Facebook uh, as well. But uh, Desiree has some important information, and then we'll, <laughs> we'll close it out. Yeah, so I want to thank everyone for joining us tonight. For our Scranton Talks with James Worthington tonight, we do have wonderful events coming up. So be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to stay up to date on all of that we have going on. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel as well because you'll see our talks go up there as well and our podcast on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. We'll put the talks there on our YouTube channel and our podcast. So the Independent Film Creative Hub is here for you. Mm -hmm. It's geared to help filmmakers reach their potential and becoming successful creative artists. Be sure to visit www.ourcreativehub.com and join our directory. It's free to sign up. Yes, it's definitely free. And um, I'm going to put up right here just the mystery box that I forgot to put before, mysteryboxfilmchallenge.com, just to see um, where everything that we do is all part of the Creative Hub. So we're going to just keep on telling you about it and if mm -hmm. you uh, if you are not sure if you want to join our creative hub i mean i'm not sure why you know like we we want to make sure that we can bring you scranton talks we can bring you mystery box we can bring you other content and again for james it goes for you and other creatives if you're interested in doing anything any collaboration with us or with other uh Uh, content creators just feel free to go on our facebook uh site and and, and start connecting because that's what it's all about we want to bring film back to scranton we want to build this community and i think we're yeah. getting there so it's because of you and other artists that are doing great great things around here so we want to thank you for that and uh thank you again for joining us again um just for anyone that's looking to share their story As well, if you want to be on Scranton Talks and be part of the show, uh, you can send us a message uh, and we will, um, you know, look at our calendar and put you in. Why not? All right. So we have a little bit of time. Um, we do have a Facebook question. Um, oh, we do. Yeah, our, I forgot our, about that. Yeah. Our, one of the first, uh, um, Rose Lindsay asks, James, Ooh. what creative person, past or present, would you like to talk to and why? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm going to say, uh, not, not to focus on the dark night again, but, uh, Heath Ledger, I would love to, uh, talk to him about his creative process and, and, uh, you know, because his work was so varied and, and so influential on me. Um, yeah, I, I, I would say that. No, that, yeah, he was, he was a great actor and he, he mm -hmm. did so many, Uh, wonderful films and uh, uh, it was it was a shame that we lost them so early but uh, mm -hmm. uh, definitely is is that, that was a great question do we have any more before um, we leave that was the only one I saw about chat okay and, and I know it's hard to do questions on Facebook for anyone that uh, uh, is watching uh, just because uh, you haven't seen the film you haven't seen the filmmaker but now after you actually have you know 
know a little bit about James, uh, I hope you reach out. Uh, he um, on his YouTube page. I'm gonna put on uh, the uh, screen at the end just so you can see um, the website and see more of uh, his films and upcoming projects. But again, uh, thank you so yep. much, everyone, for being here and uh, keep on doing great stuff. And let's let's just keep building this community up. Uh, you know, we need more films uh, around here. All right. So th thank you, James. And we really thank appreciate James. your time. Yeah, thank you both so much. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone.